It was the most peaceful, orderly, organized, disciplined demonstration in the history of America. The Million Man March put black people in the hearts of the people all over the world. God didn't want you to deal with me. God didn't want me to speak so you could focus on my words. God wanted you to focus on the miracle that had just happened in Washington. I went out in the desert and got quiet. I needed to know what the next thing was. And it began to crystallize. My job was to get up quickly and get out of America and connect the nation of Islam and black America to Africa, to the Middle East, and to the Muslim world. That was why I had to go. On the hills of the Million Man March, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan embarked on a series of world friendship tours that spanned the years 1996 to 2002 and took him to over 50 nations. Australia, Bangladesh, Barbados, Bermuda, Canada, Easter Island, Morris Chile, Islands, Cuba, Dagestan, Dubai, Egypt, Ethiopia, the Gambia, Ghana, Guyana, Indonesia, Iran, Iraq, Jamaica, Jordan, South Korea, Lebanon, Liberia, Libya, Malawi, Malaysia, Mali, New Zealand, Niger, Nigeria, Palestine, the Philippines, Qatar, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Senegal, Sharjah, Siberia, South Africa, Sudan, Suriname, Switzerland, Syria, Tahiti, Tobago, Trinidad, Tunisia, Turkey, Uganda, Yemen, Zimbabwe. During his world friendship tours, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was welcomed by numerous heads of state, government officials, and religious luminaries, including Dr. Hassan Turabi of the Sudan, President Omar Bashir of the Sudan, President Conore of Mali, President Taki of the Comoros, President Mobutu of Zaire, Grand Sheikh Tantawi of Al Azhar. President Yahya Jame of the Gambia. President Jerry John Rawlings of Ghana. President Charles Taylor of Liberia. Leader of the Libyan Jamaharia, Colonel Muammar Gaddafi. President Mulusi of Malawi. President Bari of Niger. The Emir of Kano, El Haji Ado Bayero. President Yasser Arafat of Palestine. The Grand Mufti of Russia, Ravel Gainutkin. President Nelson Mandela of South Africa. Winnie Madigazela Mandela of South Africa. The Grand Mufti of Siberia. The Bona Sheikh of Saudi Arabia. Nader Shak Kachalayev, President of the Muslim Union of Russia. President Ramos of the Philippines. President Ali Abdullah Saleh of Yemen. The Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani. The leader of the revolution, El Comandante Fidel Castro. The Grand Mufti of Syria, Ahmed Kuftaro. President Mugabe of Zimbabwe. The Oba of Benin. So I don't come back to Africa to apologize for white people. I come back because I love Africa, and I want to see Africa liberated and totally free. And I know the aims and the aspirations of the white man against Nigeria, because when I come to Nigeria, I see the soul of Africa. I see the heart of Africa. I see the brilliance of Africa in the sons and daughters of Nigeria. So rest assured, my dear Royal Highness, 
we will go back to america and we will tell the story of what we saw and what we heard and what we felt and we will never let that enemy crush and destroy nigeria for if they crush and destroy nigeria they will crush and destroy the hopes of all of africa and black people all over the world and so I thank you for these few minutes to be in your royal company. It is a pleasure, it is an honor to be in the presence of black royalty after being in the presence of white presidents and white senators and white mayors and white governors who don't have our interests at heart. It is a pleasure to come home. It is a pleasure to be here. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the miracle of the nation of Islam in America. In country after country, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was greeted with receptions, celebrations, ceremonies and performances, an outpouring of love and hope inspired by the miracle of the Million Man March.
While in Dagestan, Minister Farrakhan was escorted by the cavalry of mounted soldiers to the Juma Mosque to address the people of Dagestan. In Nigeria, the Shehu or King of Borno Mustafa ibn Sanda hosted a mini durba in the minister's honor. Minister Farrakhan is only the ninth person in the thousand year history of Islam in that region to be honored with a durba. A parade of thousands of chiefs and warriors, many on horseback, each lowering his sword or spear in respect. Here in the Gambia, on the island of Jufre, the birthplace of Kunta Kinte, the delegation learned of a building project commissioned by the late Alex Haley, who found his roots here. Plans for the proposed mosque were scrapped because monies earmarked by Haley for the project never reached their intended destination. We will build this, the nation of Islam will build this with the help of our people. and. Um, we don't want a long time, you know? We want to, I would give him some money before I leave. Uh, I'll tell the president today, and we will work through the government to make sure that this gets done. Yes, sir. And uh, it will be a monument to Alex Haley. All of this area, will be the area where the mosque and school will be built. And it will be built in the name of Alex Haley and his family to show gratitude to Allah for his life and his work. That his life's work brought the village of Jufre and connected Jufre to us in the United States and all of black America has benefited from the life struggle of Alex Haley to find his roots and as a result of that all of black America is indebted to Alex Haley and the village of Jufre 
for sharing with us the rich uh, legacy of our history. So the Nation of Islam, on behalf of Alex Haley, his family, and on behalf of black America, will take the lead in building a mosque and a school. And we hope that all of our people will join us in building a heritage center here in Jufre, where our brothers and sisters can come from the United States to the Gambia and get acquainted with their roots from those wise griots who know our history uh, better than anything that has been recorded uh, in libraries thus far. <laughs> Nosotros hemos estado ya en 36 países. And to be here in Cuba and to see these young performers y estar aquí en Cuba y ver estos jóvenes músicos has been one of the crowning points ha sido uno de los of our journey. culminantes de nuestra gira. It brought tears to my eyes Me sacó lágrimas de los ojos. Because through them I traveled back in time to when I was their age. It was wonderful. And I cannot help but give thanks for the revolutionary leader who has produced a mighty nation. In spite of all that you have suffered a pesar de todo lo que han sufrido, and continue to suffer, y continúan sufriendo, your art, your culture, su arte, su cultura, your will, su voluntad, and your strength y tu fuerza, will be a beacon light van a ser como un faro, not only to the rest of the Caribbean, no solo para el resto del Caribe, but you are the germ of an entire new world. Pero ustedes son el germen de todo un mundo nuevo. You must never be discouraged. Nunca deben perder la fe. No matter what the West or America says. No importa lo que diga el occidente o los Estados Unidos. This is the best country in the Western Hemisphere. Este es el mejor país del hemisferio occidental. And your leader. Y su líder has done more for human rights ha hecho más por los than any leader in this hemisphere. Que otro de este May Allah bless Cuba, que Allah Cuba and bless these young people y que a estos to follow your dreams. Para que sigan, con and sus I años. hope I live long enough y espero vivir lo to see you on the concert stage. Para My beloved family of Bermuda, I'm appealing to you for your marriages, for your family, for your home, for your community, for your own religious persuasion. Be like Jesus. Be like Muhammad. Be like Moses. Be like Abraham. Be like the lion of the tribe of Judah. Be! Be! Don't talk him, live him. That's right. Don't walk him, live him. And when you live like the lion of the tribe of Judah, then when you roar, the whole world will shiver and shake. If you live like Jesus, you can transform Bermuda and make Bermuda not just an island paradise, for people who want to vacation in the sun, 
but make Bermuda an island paradise for those who live here, work here, suffer here, die here. Despite health challenges that kept the minister in near constant pain, he maintained a relentless schedule with meetings, public addresses, press conferences and interviews, many times all in the same day. All of this in an effort to promote atonement, reconciliation, responsibility and peace, and to link black America with Africa and the Muslim world. None of you can deny that what I'm saying is the truth. You know it's the truth. But either you won't write it, or you're too cowardly to speak it, because you want some favor here or favor there. So because you can't talk, you are muzzled. I'm not. I'm a free black man. And I didn't come here looking for a handout. And I really don't think you need one. Your problem is that you think you need a handout. Everything you need is right under your foot, but you're looking everywhere else for help instead of to yourself and what you can produce for yourself. This is Africa's dilemma. You are parading yourself before the world as international beggars when you gave civilization to the world. Your problem is not America. Your problem is not Israel. Your problem is not Britain. Your problem is your disunity and your dependence on others to do for you what you could do for yourself. So I don't have to come back here anymore to help you. The help is already here. The knowledge is already here. The land is here. The sun is here. The water is here. The minerals is here. are here. You have some of the finest mines in the world, but they're in Europe and they're in America making money while Africa suffers. Why don't we create politically stable environment and call the children of Africa back home to help build Africa? We are your children and we will come and help. But don't expect us to come with billions of dollars when we don't have it. We're struggling in America. But you got it all right here under your foot. And you should be ashamed not to look to yourself begging white folk to give you what you could give yourself. What I said today, which, which one of these countries is gonna give you $20 million? America's not gonna give you 20 million. You got it right here, but your disunity won't allow you to pool it. It's your fault, and you got to accept that responsibility. That is why my message is atonement, reconciliation, and responsibility. We got to stop blaming everything on somebody else and see what is our responsibility here. Let me quote your, your own website here. There's a passage that says, we believe that Allah, parentheses God, appeared in the person of Master W. Fard Muhammad, July 1930, the long-awaited Messiah of the Christians and the Mahdi of the Muslims. Now, I think that would be controversial among the mainstream Muslims. Could you understand or clarify these, uh, these statements that, he, that, he, that God appeared in the person uh, now, of Fard sir, in Detroit? With all due respect to you from the Washington Times, you are certainly no authority on what would create confusion among mainstream Muslims. And of course, I understand your motive for raising such question, but I will answer you very succinctly in a way that I believe all Muslims would understand. First of all, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, said to all of us in his hadith that the Mahdi would come out of his family and the whole Muslim world is expecting Mahdi, number one. The Muslim world also is expecting the return of Jesus coming with Mahdi. The third point is the Shiite Muslims are looking for the hidden Imam or the twelfth Imam which is called Imam Mahdi. And they thought that Ayatollah Khomeini was uh, that imam, but from his own lips, he said he was not Mahdi. Now, why does the, why does the Muslim Ummah need a Mahdi? The Mahdi is a guide. And you don't need a guide if you have not lost your way. 
And no one can deny that the Islamic world has lost the path of Allah that they were guided to from the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said three generations after him would no longer be of him, which meant that he knew that his ummah would go astray and therefore the Mahdi was prophesied to come. We believe that the Mahdi has come and that he came in the person of W. Farad Muhammad. And why do we say Allah? Because if you look at the attributes of Allah, starting with mercy, beneficence, starting with Malik, a judge, or Rabbil Alameen, one who nurtures something from one stage and makes it attain stage after stage until it reaches per um, perfection. He's Wali, the protecting friend. He's Jabbar. He's all of this. Well, you tell me, who visited us since I came up in America that most of you are afraid of? But I have no fear of that that is the power in the world. Who protects me? You don't. They don't. But I come and go as I please because Allah is with me. He came to us. His beneficence and his mercy raised me. I never was taught in Al-Azhar nor in any school of theology in the Islamic world. But if you listen to me, you will know that I have been taught by a master because no master over here has defeated and can defeat what I have been taught of a master. I am here to awaken a world that has gone to sleep. If you listen to me and hear what I say, you will awaken to your responsibility and come back to Allah. Thank you for your question. I know you didn't intend it for good, but God brought good out of it anyway. <laughs> In 1996, in the wake of the Million Man March, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was awarded the Qaddafi Prize for Human Rights in Tripoli, Libya. Hereby, the International Popular Committee of the Gaddafi Prize for Human Rights re resolved to award the prize for the year 1996 to the militant, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. The International Popular Committee of the Gaddafi Prize for Human Rights Minister Farrakhan was humbled by the deluge of gifts he received, tokens of the affection he inspired in people around the world. Saudi Arabia, the revered Bona Sheikh, known affectionately as the Sheikh of Sheikhs, turned over to the minister his cloak and his staff, the symbols of his legacy and his authority. You will give them these daggers and they will be with you and they will guard you. In December of 1997, President Alpha Konare of Mali presented the minister with the gift of a ram. The ram symbolizes high honor. Scripturally, it signifies God's approval of Abraham. This is a white ram for yourself and your delegation. You know the symbol of the I know you. I know that you know the symbolic around this uh, uh, ram. Que nous nos this is the way we welcome our brothers. Minister Farrakhan quickly formed a bond with the ram, but it was to be sacrificed before he left Mali for the next stop. I will tour. cherish all of the gifts that you have given to us in demonstration of solidarity and love. <laughs> Well, 
But the greatest of all of the gifts was the life of the ram. Allah. In 2002, Minister Farrakhan set out on another world tour, this time a peace mission. With the clouds of war on the horizon, he and his delegation left the shores of America for the eye of the storm, the Middle East. And who better than somebody raised from the dead coming up out of North America? We're, we're, we're not politicians. We're not coming asking for nothing. And we're not looking for nothing. Remember the Quran, do no favor seeking gain. The gain will come when you do that which is right to do, then whatever God will favor you with, he will give you. But if you go there corrupted, thinking of some gain, monetarily or any other kind of way, you corrupt the spirit of this mission. We ain't here for nothing but peace. That's number one. Then two, to stop a war that President Bush and his advisors are trying to get him to involve the American soldiers into that kind of war. This would not be the minister's first time traveling to this part of the world on a peace mission. Well, this is not a diet that no, can sir. sustain life. No yes. meat, you said. You, 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 this help us? It's a slow death yeah. for the whole nation, not, mm -hmm. not just the little babies, but for the whole population. Uh, and of course, similar sanctions are in effect in other countries around the world, you know, and so this is genocide. That's the only word that describes what is taking place here. But I cannot use my brain for yeah, treating I these children. We have no facility. And we decided not to leave home. Yeah, yeah. The, same, the second missile entered by the tunnel made by this first missile. No. Why are you in Baghdad, Minister Farrakhan? Baghdad is the focus of the world because the clouds of war hover over this great city and the winds of war are threatening not only this city and nation, but this entire region, which could lead to a war that could engulf the entire world. came over the news uh, this morning that the Justice Department of the United States government condemned my visit to Libya. Why? Am I a slave? Is America a plantation that I must seek permission from my government to visit my own brothers? 
नहीं होती His words resonated with people around the globe. He touched the hearts of audiences everywhere with a healing from the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad for every condition or circumstance he encountered. You must not bow down to the English. You must not bow down to America. We must bow down only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've seen Africans that have graduated from Al Azhar with doctorate degrees serving young Kuwaiti Arabs who don't have a degree. That is true. That is true. Talk back to me. Go ahead. Is this the way we should degenerate? No, sir. Is this the way we should be as Muslims? No, sir. An inferior group so that if we're with the Pakistanis, we want to be Pakistani? No, sir. We're with the Arab, we want to be an Arab? No, sir. We're with somebody else who got it, we want to be like them? No. Why don't you want to be your African self? Allahu Akbar. Takbir! I don't speak just to the living. I speak for the dead who died under the whip and the lash and the gun at the tree drowned in the rivers and the lakes. I speak for those who are silent now and many of you may have forgotten the sacrifice of those who put you in those seats, but I cannot forget. And because I speak to the living on behalf of the dead, and I speak to your wombs, which carry the unborn seed of the future of our people, then you can't buy me. There's no price in the heavens above or in the earth beneath that no man can give me. And therefore, you are looking at a free black man who is free to tell the truth regardless to whom or what. Well, brothers and sisters, May God bless each of you, keep you, and if I don't see you again from this day forward, I want the brothers to be very respectful of the women, the sisters, and I want the sisters to be very respectful of yourselves. I don't want you anymore to see yourself as a sex pet of men but see yourself as the serious creation of Almighty God. And I wish that you would wear garments that don't expose the beauty of your body that make dogs bark and howl and men act crazy. Because when you show a man your hips and your bosom and your backside, 
that attracts him. It's natural. It's really natural. You see a man face frown up and his mouth drooling. But that's what you get. If the man marry you for your bosom, what gonna happen when it get flat? <laughs> if the man marry you for your hips, what gonna happen when you lose them? You need to marry on a much higher level. Marriage is not the unity of two bodies, but it is the unity of two minds, two souls, two spirits. For the Quran says the believing men, the believing women, the faithful men, the faithful women, the charitable men, the charitable women. Allah puts us together like that. And we can't build Liberia again with only one foot. A man that walks with one foot needs help. So God give you two foot. He give you male and female. He says in the Quran, I created you from a single essence. And I created your mate of the same essence. And from these two, we spread many men and women. So it's going to be male and female, the faithful men and the faithful women, the truthful men, the truthful women, the sacrificing men, the sacrificing women, the charitable men and the charitable women, the knowledgeable men and the knowledgeable women that will rebuild Liberia better than it has ever, ever been before. May Allah bless us to do this. Thank you. I see our sisters. And I'm very happy to see our sisters. Because true Islam will never marginalize women. Remember, remember that if the women do not know the Quran and the words of Allah and study the words of Allah, how then can they pass on to the children what they do not know? <laughs> My teacher taught me, no nation can rise any higher than its woman, for the woman is the mother of civilization. <laughs> now why is this so? When you teach a man, you teach an individual. When you teach a woman, you teach a nation. <laughs> remember the story of Yusuf in the Quran. Yusuf was sold into slavery in Egypt by his own brothers. But Yusuf became a master in the land where he was sold as a slave. We were sold into America by some of our African brothers to be made slaves. But when we were brought to America, the Europeans wanted no Muslims in the Western Hemisphere. So they murdered our fathers and mothers that they could not teach us Arabic, that they could not pass on to us our own names, our own language, our own culture, our own religion, our own God, and our own history. And then they sold us as though we were cattle or sheep or horses or products from one plantation to another. They denied us the right to learn, to know. We fell down in America and became drunkards. We became thieves and prostitutes. We were ignorant people divided against each other. We were in a state of jahiliyyah 
worse than the Arabs prior to the advent of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But Allah, the Beneficent, Allah, the Merciful, had mercy on us. A woman from this area of the world gave birth to a son in the holy city of Mecca. His name, Farad Muhammad. He came to America to bring Islam to the blacks. He stayed among us three and one half years. And he searched among us for one person that he could put on his shoulders the mission of raising us up from mental death. And now I'm proud to tell you that Islam has dignified us. Islam united us. Islam made us throw down our whiskey and our wine bottles. Islam stopped us from using drugs. Islam gave us a strong family life. We believe it is our destiny to become masters in the land where we were sold as slaves. Farrakhan is in the world, and Farrakhan is not afraid. Farrakhan knows that there is no God but Allah. Farrakhan declares to the world, I will not bow down to nothing or no one but God, and I will stand up for truth and for right and for justice, and I will speak the truth regardless to whom or what. If I live, I will live on the truth, and if I die, I will die on behalf of the truth, for there is nothing in the universe greater than the truth, so let all of our lives be a witness for truth.